in this section, we are going to describe the basic algorithm that was invented by George Danzig to solve linear programming problems. And you not only are going to uh, identify how to solve the problem, but also you are going to learn a specific terminology that is important in the theory of linear programming. In this section, we are going to talk about the simplex method. In my opinion, this is one of the greatest invention of modern times. Why I say that? Because of the broad applicability of the simplex method uh, by solving uh, linear programming problems that address uh, business problems. Basically, the, sim the simplex method is going to be a systematic approach to tra traverse the vertices of the polyhedron that contains the feasible solutions of um, a linear programming problem. And through the simplex method, we are going to find um, the optimal solution of this problem. So uh, let's now discuss a systematic approach to tra traverse the vertices of the polyhedron that contains all the feasible solutions of the uh, a linear programming problem in order to find the optimal solution of this problem. Um, this approach is known as the simplex method and was invented by uh, George Danzig. So to, to explain the system method, we, we are going to use similar ideas uh, to the ones that we uh, used when we were solving the problem uh, graphically. So remember, the initial production plan was to build zero chairs and zero tables. When we have this production plan, the revenue is uh, zero dollars. And we notice that the price of a table is larger than the price of uh, a chair. So it will be advisable to produce um, uh, tables. So uh, we can improve the revenue by building uh, chairs and then we move from zero uh, tables and zero chairs to produce 20 tables and zero chairs. And again, and, and this is the, the blue dot that we had uh, in, 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 this, in this graph. And again, we found opportunity of starting building chairs and tables simultaneously and to improve the, the revenue. And then we reached this new point uh, where we were building 24 chairs and 14 tables. Then at that point, we realized that we couldn't uh, increase the revenue because all the resources were depleted. So we declare that at that point, the, the solution was optimal because we couldn't increase the, the, the solution anymore. So now let's see how we can follow these same ideas, but uh, using algebra to, 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 to see how we can generate uh, each of these points. So the, the, the formulation of, of the furniture problem uh, we are going to call it uh, the original linear programming uh, problem. And as you recall, what we wanted to do was to maximize the total revenue. And the total revenue was, um, uh, entails maxi uh, the production of chairs and the production of tables. And the revenue generated by the production of chairs was 45 uh, times x1 uh, chairs and the total revenue uh, generated by the production of table was 80 times the production of tables. And we have two types of constraints. Uh, the mahogany constraints, in the left-hand side of this constraint, we have the total consumption of mahogany by the production plan X1 and X2, and this should be less or equal than 400 units of uh, mahogany capacity. And the labor capacity constraint uh, had in the left-hand side the consumption of labor by the production plan X1 and X2, and this should be less or equal than $450 uh, 50 units of, of labor. And last, uh, we have the non-negativity constraints, um, which is X1 and X2 uh, that should be greater or equal to uh, zero. So um, let's 
transform this original problem into an, in another form that we are going to call the standard form. And how we are going to do that? We are going to transform the inequalities that we have into uh, equalities. So if you remember from previous section, to transform the inequality of the mahogany constraint, we add a slack variable, H1, that measures the unused capacity uh, of mahogany. So the mahogany constraint will be expressed an, a, a, as an equation in the following way. 5x1 plus 20x2 represents the consumption of mahogany based on the production plan. Now, if we add the unused capacity, these two terms should be equal to the total capacity of mahogany that we got. That's why we could express this inequality in terms of an equation. In the same way, we can do that for the labor constraint. In the left-hand side, we will have 10x1 plus 15x2 represent the total consumption of labor by the production plan x1 and x2. To this term, we are going to use the unused capacity. So the consumption plus the unused capacity should be equal to 450 hours of labor that uh, defines the labor constraint. Finally, we will have the non-negativity constraint for all the variables that we have. So we will have x1, x2, h1, and h2 greater or equal to zero. And, uh, a natural initial solution of the furniture problem in a standard form is a production plan that we don't produce chairs and tables, which this is what we did when we were solving the problem graphically. So uh, when we don't produce chairs and we don't produce tables, what is the revenue? The revenue is zero dollars. And now let's see what is happening with the capacity. If we are not uh, producing anything, we are not consuming any mahogany. So that means that the unused uh, capacity of mahogany is equal to the total capacity, which is 400 units of mahogany. Also, when we are not producing anything, we are not consuming any labor. So the unused uh, capacity of labor will be equal to the total uh, capacity of labor that we have, which is 450 hours. So um, we said that x1 equal to 0, x2 equal to 0, h1 equal to 400, and h2 equal to 450 is a feasible solution meaning that this is a solution that uh, uh, is valid for the set of uh, constraints that we had. So consider this feasible solution and consider the, the variables that are positive. These variables are H1 and H2. So in, in, in the terminology of linear programming, we said that these variables that are positive are the basic variables. So H1 and H2 are going to be the basic variables. And the variables that are equal to zero in this feasible solution in the terminology of linear programming are going to be X1 and X2. And uh, these, these are called non-basic variables. So this solution that has the non-basic variable equal to zero, x1 and x2, and the basic variables uh, h1 and h2 that are positive, this solution is called a basic feasible solution. And this is very important. This is terminology of, of linear programming because we are going to be talking in these terms throughout uh, the whole uh, chapter of linear programming and future chapters that we are going to cover. So a basic solution is defined by the values of the basic and non-basic variables. So a production plan, so for example, a production plan that doesn't build any chairs and builds 30 tables will have an uh, H1, which represents the, the unused capacity, will be equal to minus 200. This value of H1 
is infeasible because now you, we are violating the non-negativity constraint. But what is the interpretation of this minus 200? That in order to build 30 tables, we will need an extra capacity of 200 units of, uh, of mahogany to be able to satisfy this production plan. In this particular case, uh, we also can find that the, the, uh, the variable H2 is equal to zero. H2 represents the consumption of labor. So for this particular solution, we are consuming all the labor. So in general terms, a solution that doesn't build chairs, builds 30 tables, H1 uh, is negative, meaning that it's infeasible, and H2 is equal to zero, we say that this is a basic infeasible solution. And this is also an important terminology in, in linear programming. So we can have basic solutions that are feasible, and we can have basic solutions that are infeasible because we are violating some constraint. But uh, we need to, to, we are going to use both when we are solving a linear programming problems. So um, another important representation of the problem is called the canonical form. And the canonical form uh, is defined respect to the basic variables that we have in, 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 in an initial solution or, or, or in, in any basic solution. So what are the basic variables for this uh, initial basic solution? They are H1 and H2. So what we do uh, when we uh, represent the linear programming problem in a canonical form, we are going to express the basic variables, H1 and H2, in terms of the non-basic variables. These non-basic variables, we know that they are set to zero. So after some uh, algebraic um, operations, we use the standard form and then we transform it into a canonical form that express the basic variables in terms of the non-basic variables. So the basic variable H1, which represents the unused mahogany, it will be equal to 400 minus some linear uh, terms um, uh, that, are, uh, that are represented by the non-basic variables. And the basic variable H2 is going to be equal to 450 minus a linear combination of the non-basic variables. And remember, these non-basic variables are set to zero. So, ah, and, and in the objective function, also we will have, uh, we will express uh, uh, the objective function in terms of the non-basic variables. So all the coefficients of the basic variables, H1 and H2, will have a coefficient of zero in the, in the objective function. And the coefficients of the, or associated with the non-basic variables, they, 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 they have a, a special term. They are called the reduced costs. And in this particular case, the reduced cost of, uh, of x1 and x2 are 45 of x1 and 80 for x2. And remember, these coefficients are called reduced cost. So the current basic solution H1 equal to 400 and H2 equal to 450 and the non-basic variables H1 and H2 equal to zero has a revenue of zero dollars. Similar to what we have done uh, when we were using the algebraic, uh, when we were using the graphical approach. So is there any opportunity to improve this, this solution? We can follow the same logic as we follow when we were using the graphical approach. We will identify which non-basic variable that has a value of zero can be increased. So uh, uh, we have two prices, $45 for the chair and $80 for the table. So what is the product that generates more revenue is to build tables. So what we want to do is to make x2 greater than zero. So in this sense, we say that the non-basic variable x2 is going to enter the basis. 
Enter the basis will mean that it, it will take a positive value. And in that way, we will be able to generate more revenue. So now the question is, how many tables can we make without violating the constraints that we have related to mahogany and labor capacity? Because we want to have a basic feasible solution. So let's look at, at, at the, um, the basic variables expressed in terms of the non-basic variable that we want to uh, increase uh, its value. So H1 will be equal to 400 minus 20x2, and x2 will be equal to 450 minus 50x2. So what we want to do is to see in each of these equations, what is the maximum number of tables that we can build without making uh, H1 or X2 uh, or uh, H2 uh, negative. So the maximum number of tables that we can make based on the equation associated with H1 is 400 divided by 20, which is 20 tables. And the maximum number that we can make uh, uh, with the equation related to H2 is 450 divided by 15. This means 30 tables. Okay, so we have two, these two numbers related to the number of tables that we can produce. So let's assume that we build 30 tables. What is going to happen with the slack variable uh, H1? So H1 will become negative meaning that it's going to be infeasible. So what we want to do is to do a test that is called the minimum ratio test that will choose the minimum value of these two possibilities of building chairs, 20 and 30 tables. So with 20 tables, we will be able to satisfy both constraints because if we go and build 30 tables, we, we are going to make uh, infeasible H1. So applying this uh, minimum ratio test, we decide that the maximum number of tables that we can produce is 20 tables. So in this sense, we are going to say that the basic variable, which is H1, is going to leave the basis. Leaving the basis, means that it's going to become zero. So now, now we have a new basis. The new basis uh, are the variables that are going to be positive. So one of these uh, basic variables is going to be x2, and the other one is going to be h2. So what we are going to do uh, is to express the problem in terms of these new basic uh, uh, variables. So we are going to express it in the canonical form. And this particular step in linear prog programming is called pivoting. So uh, we are going to find a new solution, a new basic solution in terms of these x2 and h2 uh, uh, variables. So, so how, how, how do we do that? So remember, our problem um, has uh, tell us that x2 is going to be the non-basic variable that will become uh, basic. And h1 is going to be the basic variable that is going to become zero or non-basic. So if we consider the column associated with the variables x2, and we consider the equation that has the h1 variable, and at the intersection of this row and this column, we find this coefficient 20. This, this coefficient has a, a, a name in, in linear programming, and it's called the pivot, because we are going to transform this equation, and we are going to express this equation in terms uh, of, we are going to say x2 is going to be equal or is going to be represented in terms of the non-basic variables, which in this case are h1 and, and, and x1. So that's what we do, we do now. Um, we express x2 in equation 2 in terms of h1 and x1, which are the non-basic variables. And what we get is this equation, which is 
x2 is going to be equal to 20, which is the number of tables that we say that we can produce, minus a linear combination of uh, the non-basic variable. Now that, now that we have this equation, what we are going to do is to replace the value of uh, the variable x2 in equation 3 and represent the, the basic variable h2 in terms of the non-basic variables, which are x1 and h1. So after some algebraic um, operations, we see that h2 is going to be equal to 150 minus a, a linear combination of the non-basic variables x1 and h1. And the interpretation of h, h2 equal to 150 is that we are going to have 150 units of unused labor capacity when we decide to build 20 tables. And we are going to consume all the mahogany since now h1 is going to be equal to zero. And again, in the objective function, we are going to substitute the value of x2 uh, and, and express the objective function in terms of the non-basic uh, variables. So again, after some uh, algebraic operations, we find out that now uh, the new basic feasible solution will generate $1,600 and plus some linear combination of the, of the non-basic variables, which are x1 and h1. So now we, we have the, the linear uh, programming problem uh, represented in a canonical form respect to the new basic variables x2 and h2 in this way we are going uh, to have that x2 is equal to 20, meaning that we are going to build 20 tables, h2 equal to 150, meaning that we, we have 150 units of unused capacity, and remember x1 and h1 are equal to zero, and in the objective function we are going to have that the total revenue is going to be equal to $1,600, and um, the coefficients of the basic variables are always going to be zero, and the, the reduced cost associated with the non-basic variable x1 is now 25, and the coefficient associated with the non-basic variable h1 is minus four. So what, so we have doing the pivoting, and now we are, graphically, we are now at this new point, uh, blue point uh, in, in, in the polyhedron. So now let's see if we have an opportunity to improve this uh, basic solution. And what we can do is to observe that um, the x1 variable, which now is equal to zero, has a positive coefficient meaning that we can, if we make x1 positive, we will be able to generate $25 uh, per unit of chair that we produce. So it seems that um, uh, it will be attractive to, 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 to build chairs. So essentially what we have done is to complete the first iteration of the simplex method and now we are in the second iteration of the simplex method where we are trying to see if we can improve the, the, the value of, of the objective function given this new uh, basic solution, which is represented by x2 and h2, and the non-basic variables are x1 and h1. So, as you remember, we want to identify which non-basic variable will enter the basis. And as we mentioned before, if we make chairs, then we can produce $25 per chair that we build. So we say that x1 enters the basic, meaning that we are going to make x1 positive. 
And then we need to identify how large x1 can be. And for this, we use the minimum ratio test. So basically, we are going to identify, based on the first equation, no, on equation uh, 2.0, we identify that we can build 80 chairs and make, uh, and make x2 0. Or in equation 3.0, we can build 24 chairs and make x, uh, h2 equal to 0. So when we take the minimum of these two values, we say that uh, we are going to use equation 3 and the pivot is going to be 24 divided by 4. And in this case, we are going to build uh, 20, 24 uh, chairs. So since we, we have chosen this equation to do the pivoting, that means that h2, which is the basic uh, variable, is going to become 0 and x1 is going to take the value of 24. And uh, as we say, h2 leaves the basis. So the third step in linear programming is to express this, uh, this problem in, in a canonical form respect to the new basic variables that we have identified. So x2 uh, is going to remain in the basis, and now the new basic variable is going to be x1 which is uh, to build uh, chairs. So now we are building tables and we are building chairs simultaneously. And as before, based on uh, equation 3, where the pivot is, uh, we represent the new basic variable in terms of the non-basic variables. And the non-basic variables now, h1 and h2, are going to be zero. So when, after some algebraic um, operations, we say that x1 is going to be equal to 24, which is we are going to build 24 chairs, uh, plus a linear x, uh, combination of non-basic variables, h1 and h2, that are set to 0. Then we take this equation and substitute the value of x1 in equation 2, and after algebraic um, operations, we say that the number of tables that we are now going to produce is 14 uh, minus a linear combination of uh, the non-basic variables h1 and h2. Finally, uh, we substitute the value of h1 in the objective function, some algebraic uh, operations, and we identify that we now can generate $2,200 with this new production plan of building 24 chairs and 14 tables. So now we have the problem, the linear programming problem, uh, uh, expressed in a canonical form with respect to the basic variables H2, I mean X2 and X1. So what is happening here? So we know that we are going to build 14 tables and we know that we are going to build uh, 24 chairs. We are H1 and H2 are equal to zero, meaning that we are consuming all the mahogany capacity and labor capacity. We are generating $2,200 and we look at the reduced cost associated with the non-basic variables H1 and H2 and they both are negative. So that means that if we try to make H1 and H2 ne uh, positive, we are going to decrease the revenue. So what is happening is that we, we cannot go any further. So we have moved to a new point in the, this blue point where if we try to move any further, uh, what we are going to do is to violate any, any of the constraints that we have. So we said that the, the solution uh, is, is, is optimal. Why is optimal? Because the reduced cost associated with the non-basic variable H1 and, and H2 are negative. So at this point, we claim that the basic solution X1 equal to 24, meaning we build 24 chairs, building 14 tables, consuming all the capacity is optimal. So at this point, we, 
we have completed uh, the, the simplest method and we have identified an optimal solution. So let's summarize the, the, the simplest method for the mas maximization case. Um, so the first thing is to transform the original problem into the standard form, meaning all the inequalities that we have, we are going to use either slack variables for less or equal uh, inequalities or surplus value for greater or equal inequalities and transform these inequalities into equations. So that's what the standard form means. So after we have the problem in the standard form, uh, we consider an initial basic solution and then, based on this initial basic solution, we represent the problem in a canonical form respect to this uh, basic solution that we have identified. Then, at, at, at step three, now that we have the problem in, in a canonical form, we look at the non-basic variables and try to see if all the non-basic variables in this maximization problem are uh, less or equal to zero. If all the non-basic variables are less or equal to zero, this is an optimal solution. This is an optimal basic feasible solution. Because if we try to make a non-basic uh, variable positive, we are going to de decrease uh, the value of the revenue. So at this point, this is a characterization of optimality. When all the reduced costs associated with the non-basic variables are negative, we stop. We have found a basic feasible solution that is optimal. So suppose that this is not the case. So there is one non-basic variable that is positive. So if there are many non-basic variables that are, uh, or reduced costs associated with the non-basic variable that are positive, we choose the largest one because that will uh, make um, the largest improvement. So now we need to identify, now that we have this non-basic variable, that we know that we want to increase uh, the value of this, of, of, of this, uh, of this non-basic uh, uh, variable, we need to e identify if all the coefficients in this column of non-basic variables are positive, then that means that that variable can be increased arbitrarily because there is nothing that is going to stop uh, the production of, of, of tables or chairs. So in this case, when you have identified that there is a reduced cost that is positive and all the coefficients associated with the non-basic variables are positive in the canonical form, that means that you can arbitrarily increase this variable and the problem essentially you declare it as unbounded, meaning that there is no point that will limit uh, the solution that, that you have. So suppose that your problem is bounded and you have, a, in the canonical form, you have a negative coefficient associated with the non-basic variable. So that means that there is a limit that will violate a, a constraint. So in this case, what you do is you apply the minimum ratio test for the coefficients that are negative in, in, in the non-basic variable that you have identified that uh, will enter the basis. And then, now that you have identified a non-basic variable that has a positive reduced cost, and you have identified a basic variable that is going to leave the basis, meaning that it's going to become zero, you do the pivoting st step. And remember, the pivoting step means to represent the problem in a canonical form respect to the new basic uh, variables that you have identified. So now you go back to step two and you continue this process until you either find an optimal solution or you identify that your problem is unbounded. This is the summary of the simplex method. Thank you very much.